Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about uh, an extension of my bongo videos that I did a couple of years ago. I've gotten a lot of questions, and today I'm answering a lot of those on different instruments. And this next one on bongos will answer all the questions and comments I've gotten over these last couple of years. So uh, I'm going to talk about some extended techniques, about the way I play these drums, about the drums themselves, about the heads, and some other questions you asked. First of all, these are JCR bongos. Uh, these are my um, favorites and the ones I use. Now, I do have some new skin heads on there that you can see. These are made by Remo. I prefer these on bongos these days because of uh, the humidity that's happening in North Carolina in the summer. So uh, I'll change these out. And normally I'll use uh, some real thin calf skin or um, you know, kind of a rawhide type of head. Uh, but in the summer, I do change them out. And also when I'm playing them with sticks, I'll change them out. It doesn't take long to change the heads. I've had these particular heads here for many, many years. So uh, that's what I recommend. I like these Remo heads, these new skin heads. And I definitely put one on the macho here uh, rather than the hemper, but I have them both uh, here now. So, so you could hear what they sound like. I changed them out. So uh, the good thing about these heads is you can crank them way up. And that's one of the big questions I get asked, how high should I tune them? Well, the answer is it just depends on what kind of music you're playing. If you're playing dance music, like a salsa gig with congas and timbales, you want to crank them way up so you don't have to hit hard to be heard. All right. If you're playing more of an orchestral Broadway gig, you might want to tune them like this, which is just a little lower. That's a, a tuning that I use, so somewhere around there. So you want anywhere from a third to a fifth between the drums. And normally I will tune my the larger drum, the hembra, a little a little uh, lower than most people. That's just I use a wide tuning. Uh, so that's the drums and the heads. So hopefully that resolves that. As far as stands go, my favorite stand is this old LP type of stand, not the strap. I do not like the strap, but I like the clamp. So any stand that's got a clamp, lots of companies make them, that's what I prefer. It's more sturdy, the strap, you don't have to worry about it stretching or breaking, okay? And then I have two stands that I use. I have one when I'm sitting like this, that's lower, and I have another one which is just has an extension of when I'm, um, when I'm standing. Uh, and I could play it with congas, you know, bongos and congas together. So, so that's that question. All right, now let's talk about some techniques. So we talked about in those other videos, I showed you how to play and how I play. And I can only show you how I play. There's lots of different ways to play bongos. Uh, many people play them differently. But because I play lots of drum set and things with sticks and mallet percussion and timpani, I have to make sure my hands stay well <laughs> and fresh. So I play a little bit differently than most people, um, I think. And the same way I play congas, if you watch those videos, especially the most recent one, a conga technique for orchestral players, where I show you how I play where I do not damage my hands, okay? Now, you can play bongos with sticks. Sometimes compositions call for that. But the best sound is with your hands. So you need to learn how to play with your hands. And like I said in that other video, the, the slap, the bongo slap, is just done with your fingertips. So you're kind of playing through the drum. So for me, this middle joint right there, in between the, I guess you can call them creases or joints, that's where I'm hitting. And then my fingertips are bearing the brunt of that. Now you can play it like a conga, but to me that takes away all of the charm of the instrument. But if you're soloing and you want to go, because you can't be heard, you can use a conga slap on there. There's no law that says you can't. It's just not the nicest sound on the instrument. The instrument should sound kind of transparent, 
floating above everything else. It's usually not a main groove instrument in, in that setting. It would be the timbales and the, the congos or the drum set, depending on what kind of gig. The bongos are an accent instrument. It's color. So once again, and a solo instrument as well. So you're not, uh, you're not trying to play super loud or impactful as a rhythm instrument. So uh, I talked to you in those other videos about the thumb strokes that I use, and these are all in my book. Uh, all that stuff came from my book, all those videos. Uh, and then the finger strokes, so doing that. So that was one of the exercises. So all those hand uh, alternating things, that's similar to the heel toe that you do with the congas, right? But here you're doing thumb and then fingers in that kind of motion. So I had a little, some questions about showing you that slowly, so we'll do that now. And you want to keep your fingers separate in this kind of thing where these four are together and then your thumb. You can splay them out as well if you want to play like that. It's a different sound. So that's the way I create a lot of these grooves. You see how I'm moving my fingers. So it's all fingertips, the thumbs, the tip, and the fingertips here. Okay? So the other extended technique that I need to explain is the finger rolls. So those take place like this. The hand is flat on the drum. And then you're going from pinky to first finger, not your thumb, just four fingers, to create like a four-stroke rough. It could be counted as five strokes with, with my last hit. the same kind of thing that you use on castanets if you look at those videos where I just do that okay so the other uh, way I do this is with my nails so I'll plant my thumb like that and then I'll do uh, first finger second finger third finger pinky So my thumb is hitting and stabilizing my hand, and then the nails are coming. And then if you combine that with the finger roll, so. All right, so these are all techniques that go to udu drums as well, all different hand drums. So I would, I would suggest learning those. All right, the last question that I got a lot is soloing, playing solos. Now, my advice to you would be to listen and study. There's a great Michael Spiro book called uh, Language of the Masters, where he has uh, some really great transcription of transcriptions of bongo players, Congo players and timbali players. That particular package, Language of the Masters, has solos written out by some great bongo players as well as the transcriptions of them. So that's something you definitely want to check out. And he also has some recordings of just some Montunos, uh, which are vamps going on that you can play over. And that's really helpful and that's what I use when I teach this stuff. So we'll just play a little, we'll call it a day. <laughs> 